second week of our series called Waitlisted. Now, last week, Dell kicked off our series and she was talking about Abraham and Sarah and they were waitlisted because they were waiting and waiting for the promise of a child. Now, God told them, I'm gonna, you're gonna be a father of many nations to count the stars and as many stars as you see, that's also how many your descendants will be. Well, time passed. And they kept waiting and waiting for God to fulfill the promise. He finally did, but they felt at their time in their life that they were waitlisted. Now, have you ever been disappointed by something that you've been waiting for for a long time? Maybe you know what it's like for life to disappoint you. Maybe you know what it's like to have a big loss, a turn of events. And when those surprises hit, when those situations hit, we're often left wondering, why did this happen? How long will I feel this way? How do I fix it? These were some of the questions in, that Abraham and Sarah had. I, how, why did this happen? How long am I going to have to feel this way? God, you told me about a promise that you were going to give me. How long will I have to feel this way? How do I fix it? Do I do it on my own or do I continue to wait on God? And can anyone help me? Or maybe even, maybe really, you know what, Abraham, where's God in all of this? I want to talk to you about how to survive some of those times of disappointment and crisis and where is God and where God is when we're waiting for things to turn around. I want to introduce you to a man that you've probably heard of. If you've grown up in church any time of your life, you've, you've heard of this man. His man is, this man is named the Apostle Paul. And if you're familiar, there's a good chance you've heard about him. Paul spent his whole entire life following the religious aspect of God. As a young Jewish man, he was a high achieving religious student of his time and his story takes a major turn during the early years of Christianity when the first message of Jesus was being spread throughout everywhere. As a religious leader in the Jewish faith, Paul did not follow the teachings of Jesus. In fact, he believed that the teachings and the followers of Jesus, that they were actually enemies of God. And this belief, this belief that Paul had, he, it drove him to defend his faith by imprisoning and even killing people who claimed to be part of the Christian faith. But then something significant happened in the life of Paul. There was, there was a drastic change. He had a personal encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter with him. He surrendered his life to Jesus. <clears throat> and when Paul met Jesus, he couldn't predict at all what it is that God had in store for him. I mean, it, there was so much that God had in store. Paul eventually became one of the greatest Christian influencers of our time. He wrote much of the New Testament, was a significant leader in the early church, and he was responsible for bringing the message of Jesus into new parts of the world. You see, but despite everything that Paul, God had going in store for Paul, Paul's life after turning toward Jesus had some pretty difficult moments. There were some pretty hard disasters and things that were waiting for him. And I, and I wish that I could tell you that once you give your life to God, your life is going to be perfect. You're never going to cry. You're never going to experience pain. You're never going to experience hurt. You're never going to go through circumstances ever again because you've given your life to Jesus. And because you gave your life to Jesus, everything is going to be perfect. But I'd be lying to you because the reality of it is, is that when you give your heart to God, the enemy, Satan, wants to do everything that he possibly can to destroy you. He's going to attack you. When we see the life of Paul. One of the major ways that Paul was often waitlisted during his life was that he was being sent to prison. And I find this to be ironic because Paul would send Christians, followers of Jesus, to jail because of their faith. And now he too finds himself in jail. Even though Paul had changed his beliefs about Jesus, many of the government leaders and many of the religious leaders in that time had not done so. You see, in their eyes, 
Allowing someone to spread the message of Jesus was a threat to their power, as a threat to their control. It was a threat to uh, their kingdom and understanding of God. So they tried to imprison. They tried to even kill influential followers of Jesus. And this is what they tried to do with Paul. You see, Paul spent about five years of his life in prison, spreading the message of Jesus. And while he was there, I began to think to myself, I wonder if he ever thought, God, how am I supposed to fulfill the plans that you have for my life if I'm stuck behind bars? I mean, God, I gave my life to you and, and, and I had a I had a, a, a radical conversion with you and you told me that you've got great things in store for me, but how is that supposed to happen if I'm stuck in jail? I mean, the reality is, why aren't you stopping this? Why are you allowing this to happen? We read about these occasions in the book of Acts, and if you have your Bibles, Acts chapter 16, verse 6 through 12, and Acts is the book of the Bible that talks about how the good news, good news of Jesus was spread throughout the whole entire world. How the early church began to grow and, and what happened to some of the key, key church leaders like Paul. Acts 16 tells us about one of Paul's journeys to Macedonia and what happened to him there along with his friend Silas. Acts chapter 16 Verse 6 through 10, it says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phygia and Galatea, having kept, having kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to. So they passed by and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging to him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, he got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had clearly called us to preach the gospel to them. Did you catch all of that? Because after a long journey where God finally leads Paul and his crew to Macedonia, they face another crisis. Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown in jail for preaching the message of Jesus. And when we read the scripture, the, the chapter clearly tells us that God clearly led Paul and his friends to Macedonia to share the gospel. So if God let them there, why would they end up back in prison? Did they make a mistake? Did God make them make a mistake? I mean, God's perfect, but did he make a mistake by leading them to there? Did God put them on, in prison on purpose? Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through <clears throat> 34. While scripture doesn't tell us why God allowed Paul and Silas to be thrown in prison, it does give us a clear, it does make it clear that God didn't make them want to stay there. Verse 25, it says, after midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the, and the prisoners were listening. Can, can I just stop there for a second? Because that verse right there means so much. And, and, and it simply says that about midnight, Paul and Silas, they were complaining. They were angry at God. They were frustrated. They were letting everybody know what they were doing and how God had abandoned them. And the prisoners were listening to them. Is that what it says? I don't think so. Because it simply says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were there listening to them. Can I let you know that despite what it is that you're going through, despite the circumstances that you're facing, despite the troubles that you may be encountering, that you've got to learn how to pray and you've got to learn how to worship God despite what it is that's going on. In verse 26, it says, suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison standing open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself since he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul 
called out in a loud voice saying, don't harm yourself because we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. He escorted them out and he said, sir, what must I do to be saved? And they simply said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord, the Lord to him along with everyone in his house. He took them to the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. Right away, he and his family were baptized. He brought them into this house, set a meal before them, and rejoiced because he had come to believe in the God and his entire household. You see, Paul and Silas, they were interrupted by disappointment and crisis. And while they were waiting, while they were waitlisted for God's rescue, they still continued to worship. In the meantime, they found a reason to worship. Even while they were waiting and even while they wondering what would happen next, God showed up in a miraculous way. God rescued Paul and Silas from prison, but that's not the only miracle that happened that night. The miracle that happened that night was that God rescued that jailer. And not only him, but his whole entire household heard the message of Jesus Christ. Even when we're waiting for God's rescue, Paul and Silas trusted that God hadn't abandoned them. While they waited, wondering what God was going to do next, they found a reason to worship. You see, they knew that God could be trusted. They trusted God was with him through the process. And they believed that God would be faithful no matter what happened. And the reality of it all was that they were right. God was faithful to Paul and Silas while they were waiting in prison. And the reality is, is that while we're waiting, God is faithful to us too. You see, it's never easy to <clears throat> experience disappointment or, or a crisis or a situation like Paul and Silas, but we can always find reason to have hope and to have joy because God is faithful. And when we're waiting for hope and rescue, understand that God can be trusted. You see, the Bible is filled with evidence about how God and his trustworthiness and so if you ever need encouragement, if you ever need that reassurance, read your word and you'll see time and time again, God being faithful to his people. Next, God is with you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to you and I, this free gift to us. And the spirit of God is how God comforts us, how God speaks to us. And it's how he leads us and how he helps us grow in our daily lives. And last but not least, God is faithful to you, no matter what it is that happens. You see, Paul and Silas were rescued from prison, but they chose to sing to God even when they weren't sure what the future holds. Maybe that's you. Maybe you don't know what tomorrow holds. Maybe you don't know what next month holds. Maybe this whole 2020 and into 2021 has been something of a, of a I'm not sure what the future holds for me type of feel. But understand that no matter what, God still holds your future. He still has plans for you. They understood that God is faithful to us even when we're waiting. And even when things don't turn out the way that we had hoped, we can trust God. I don't know what situations, I don't know what disappointments you're facing right now or what you're going to face in the coming months. But when you find yourself waiting for God's rescue, I hope that you'll remember what it is that we talked about today. That while you're waiting, God is faithful to you. You see, God's faithful. Even when we're not faithful to God, God's faithful. Even when we're losing hope in our Heavenly Father, God is faithful. Even when we're filled with questions and even when we're tired of waiting, He's faithful. So when you're waiting for God's rescue, here's what I challenge you to do. I challenge you to trust that God is with you like he was with Paul and Silas. I, I, I challenge you to pray while you wait, even if the only words you know how to say are, 
help or why, that can be enough. God wants to hear you. Worship while you wait. I know it's not easy to find joy when you're surrounded by tough circumstances or your anxieties built up or you're surrounded by all of these situations and you feel like you're discouraged, but I challenge you to worship while you wait. The last one, remember God's faithfulness. How God has been faithful in your past, how God is going to be faithful even in your future. And while you're waiting, God is faithful.